This video is inspired by you, our YouTube viewers and our YouTube clients, just based on conversations that we have with you every single day or even questions that you write in the comments. Our goal with this video is to make sure that you come here or that your research is that which opens your eyes wide open so that you're making a well-informed decision. We wanna make sure that you have a realistic or healthy relationship with your new environment. And if we can save you hundreds or thousands of dollars on plane tickets, great, goal accomplished. If we can save you millions of dollars on a home that you might later regret in just a year to three years from now, goal accomplished. So let's get started. This video is called Moving to Hawaii, 21 things you need to know before you go. Starting with number one, it's isolated. Hawaii is one of those places that is the furthest from any major landmass. And you will feel it when you live here and you might be quite surprised by it. Now, sometimes people move here thinking that they want to be remote and they want to be away. But when you get here and you've got family living on the mainland, or if you're a grandparent with a child that just had a new grandbaby and you feel like you're missing out on their life, this can start to really wear on you no matter how beautiful it is. Imagine getting that call from a family member that somebody's sick and you need to get all the way over to the Midwest. Um, that comes with having to get up and coordinate flights and flights don't fly out of LAX every hour on the hour. Now, in addition to that, Amazon takes a little longer for stuff to get here. Sometimes you'll find that, or more often than not, you'll find that things get lost in the mail or they get delayed. Not everything ships here, so that's something that can get quite frustrating too. I just started ordering HelloFresh. I was so excited about it to see that they actually deliver to select Honolulu zip codes. And then I found out after I clicked the button that it's 60 bucks for shipping. So those are some of the inconveniences that people aren't always prepared for. Number two, not all beaches are private. Like you see this here. This one isn't private, although there are homes along here that would like to say, hey, this is my beach. But all beaches in Hawaii are everybody's beach. There's always gotta be public access to get to the ocean. More often than not, it doesn't look like this. The reality of Hawaii beaches is like this. Now, of course, we're in Waikiki and this is about as crowded as it gets. But even coming to the beach in Waikiki, which we locals don't really do that often, it's kind of hard because parking is tough to find. We have to park at the zoo and pay like $1.50 an hour for it. And it's a little bit of a walk to get to our favorite spots. Here in Waikiki, it's gonna be tough to find a place where you can really just like be quiet and be together. You know, you're gonna have umbrellas around you. Somebody's gonna be smoking a cigarette or playing irritating music that you don't like. But even on those like quote unquote private beaches, it's tough to find parking around those public access points. So if you live close to those beaches, that can be really convenient because you can ride a bike or walk to it like Kailua. If you've been watching some of our other videos, you'll know that we talk about that quite often. Now the next thing is island fever. Now people ask me this question all the time. I don't really know exactly what that means, but I guess I would suffice it to say that I don't really get island fever, but then again, I'm jumping on a plane like two to three times a year, oftentimes to the West Coast to get my in and out burger fix, to get my chipotle fix. So, you know, those are some of the things that we don't have here along with many others. And we have to fly to go and get it. There's really no just driving across country or going into another state for a really cool camping trip or going for a real change of scenery into the mountains that have snow. Here, it's beach, it's mountains, it's warm, it's sunny, and that's pretty much it. When you live here, it's not a vacation every day. So if you're moving here, thinking that you're going to have the daily experience of vacations you've had in the past, going to the beach and going hiking and going snorkeling and things like that, that's really not reality. The reality is most people who work here work their butts off, especially in the tourism industry. A lot of people are working in the hotels, their flight attendants, their pilots, their waiters and waitresses in restaurants. I mean, among other normal jobs, but people are working holidays and they're working days and nights. And so oftentimes it's hard to get together with people too, just because people are working so hard and life is normal. They've got kids, they're going to soccer games, yada, yada, yada. In addition to that, we have an interesting relationship with tourism. Now we know that tourism is our main economy, but at the same time, you'll see if you end up moving here because you've vacationed here many times before in no time, in like three months, you'll be like, what's with all these tourists here? 
kind of funny. So it's not like there's like hate for tourists because obviously it's a major part of our life here, but we have an interesting relationship with them. Okay, it's rare that anybody actually wants to be on camera with me, which is why it's only me most of the time, but I got lucky today. We met some people that walked up and said, what are you guys filming? What's your channel? And do you want to interview us? So heck, we're going to interview you. So tell me, what are some of the biggest misconceptions that you have found in the short time living here in Hawaii? The culture here, it's awesome. The people are amazing. Um, you really have to respect the, the culture, the people and have to understand that we are foreigners and we're coming to their land and you just kind of got to respect that. What I've, I've learned and I've noticed and I've also learned that it's this, it not this. this. That's right. right. It's this. Okay. There's this is a, a dead giveaway. Yeah, yep. dead giveaway <laughs> that you're not from here. Yeah. So yeah. I definitely say one of the biggest things that I wasn't expecting was like, not even like the, the unsaid rules, you know what I mean? Like kind of like in the sense of like the little things like that we learned today, the certain terms that they use for like the outsiders, the strangers, definitely wasn't expecting it. I also feel like Island Fever is definitely a thing. I feel like we're here and there's like no other place. Like I'm not even thinking about the fact that we're on an island and like secluded from everyone right now. Thanks for talking to our people. Thank you so Chaka. much. Yeah. Not this. A common disappointment is when people move here thinking we must have the most amazing seafood and it's just not true. Don't expect to come and live here and eat like all you can eat crab and oysters and clams and like lobster. Now fish, we have amazing fish. Some of the best fish though is going to come from a good friend or a neighbor that just caught Ono on his kayak. Thank you so much, Craig, for the Ono last week. We also have incredible poke bowls. That is one thing we do better than any place else on Earth. But as far as all of the other seafood, I'm sorry to say it's hard to come by. But we're going to go check out a place right now that has some really good fresh fish. Let's go. We're at Pa'ia Fish Market in Waikiki. This is a restaurant that comes from Pa'ia on Maui, and this is a great alternative for good seafood. It's one that you don't find that often, but it is a place where you can get some good, fresh Hawaii fish, like ahi, fresh mahi-mahi, fresh opaka-paka. It's the alternative to a poke bowl. Other places that I'll send people who are looking for really good fish might be to Duke's Waikiki. They've always got like different preparations of the fresh fish that came from the auction that morning, or even Pula Grill above Duke's in Waikiki. Another misconception is that there are only eight islands. I mean, there are really only eight islands, but there's another island that gets called the Ninth Island, and that's Las Vegas. Now, it's kind of a sensitive subject right now because there is a movement saying, stop calling it the Ninth Island because so many Hawaii people have moved over there. But it is true, Hawaii people love Las Vegas. My sister took her kids uh, and her husband, they uprooted to Las Vegas, I hate it. It makes me super sad, but they're there. Luckily, Vegas is not that far away. So if I jump on a plane, it's gonna take me about five and a half hours to get there. And there is some familiarity there because there is such a strong local community. Now, speaking of the eight islands, when we talk to a lot of our clients, they're often looking at living in Maui or Oahu. And it's so interesting because Maui and Oahu couldn't be more different. Maui really is all about tourism. There's not really any other economy happening over there. Whereas here on Oahu, you have the military bases, you have healthcare, you've got other businesses here in addition to tourism. So it feels like much more of, I don't know, a part of the United States, I guess, if you would. And it's a lot less vacation, although you do get the vacation lifestyle here as well with some of the most incredible beaches and hikes, restaurants and things to do. Here's some stuff that's kind of like subtle and sensitive, but one of them is all the brown people are Hawaiian and this couldn't be more untrue. Actually, we've got quite the mixture of cultures here. We have a lot of Filipinos, we have um, Tongans, I almost said Tomoans. Tongans, Samoans. Um, I believe our Pacific Islanders make up about 10% of the population per the census. 
Um, of course, we've got Korean, we have Chinese, we have Japanese, we have a real mixture of all kinds of ethnicities. And of course, we do have Hawaiians, not a whole lot of even 50% Hawaiians anymore. I mean, even I consider myself to be pretty um, strong in my Hawaiian culture. I'm very proud of it, but I'm about like 12 and a half percent. My great grandmother um, was pure Hawaiian. So yeah, that's just not true that all the brown people are Hawaiians. The other misconception is haole is a bad word. Hey, haole. Hi. Ali, do you too? That's just not true. I mean, going back to my own ethnicity, when people ask me what I am, I'll say I'm Hawaiian, Chinese, Filipino, Haole, because my dad is from Missouri and he's German English. Um, so not a derogatory word at all. It is a Hawaiian word. And the definition of it is ha, meaning life or breath, ole, meaning no more. And, um, you know, there's several stories regarding how the word haole was communicated way, way back in the day, but it definitely wasn't a bad word. Now, it's a bad word if there's an F word in front of it, like freaking haole and effing haole and stink haole. Um, and usually, if you do something really bad, um, okay, for example, like there was a guy on a, one of our Instagram pages this week and he was like pouring water on a monk seal after he dumped ashes of a love of a family member in the shore break. I think it was at like Sandy Beach. All of that's pretty lame. Um, he was wearing like a loud aloha shirt from ABC store, his skin's light. And so there are some things being said about him as a haole doing that. I think no matter what color your skin is though, what he did was kind of lame. Um, and on that same token, if somebody calls you a haole or an effing haole for no reason, that's also pretty lame. So that's what I have to say about that. Uh, okay, the next thing is local people hate white people. I have to say that this absolutely isn't true. I mean, you will find that even if you have vacationed here, you're not going to experience hate that's unprovoked or for no reason at all. Um, now, if it's the guy on the beach that's throwing water on the monk seal, uh, yeah, he might get lumped into that effing haole category. But I also believe that here in Hawaii, a lot of tourists, aren't educated and we could probably do a better job educating. I mean, just uh, not saying at all that what he did was right, but maybe where he's from, there's seals everywhere and they throw water on them and they shush them, still kind of lame. But here in Hawaii, we really adore our nature. We adore monk seals and sea turtles and they're endangered as well. And so we have this real reverence for everything that's around us and perhaps we can educate visitors a little bit more and that's why we do what we do on this channel. We're not necessarily here to educate visitors, but again, if you're thinking of making a move out here, we wanna make sure that you're doing it in the most educated way. Homes in Hawaii are small and many people find it very shocking how small the homes are. Maybe you'll get 1,500 square feet for about $1.1 million, but even then you're pretty lucky. It's gonna be more like 1,200 to 1,500 square feet. You're also gonna be living very close to your neighbors. Here in Hawaii, the availability of land is very scarce. A lot of the land here is owned by big developers. It's owned by Kamehameha schools, and a lot of the land is also preservation, which also makes it really hard to actually build a home here. Anybody that ever calls us about wanting to acquire land and build a home, we have to let them know that you gotta count on about $300 per square foot and the permitting process takes at least 12 to 18 months. Now going into contractors, contractors are really on their own schedule. I mean, Hawaii is a slower pace of life anyway, but contractors especially move at their own pace. For one thing, they're really busy and we find sometimes too that contractors will give bids that are so outrageous because they're actually hoping that you say no because they're so busy. Vent fans, vent fans on the stove. I know it sounds really simple, but they rarely vent outside. Usually they vent right back inside your house. It's just one of those things. Homeless people are everywhere. 
I mean, as you can see, they're not everywhere, but we do have homeless here on this island. We are ranked number four in the nation for having the highest rate of homelessness. Now we do have some different homeless populations here, especially on this island. You will see those that live on the beach in Waimanalo. You'll see those that live on the beach on the west side in Waianae very different from the homeless that you'll see in Honolulu. Sometimes we'll say we've got the ones that were grown here and those would be the ones that live on the beach and they really don't bother anybody. These are people that sometimes choose to live that way. Now I'm not going to say that people aren't priced out and don't wind up that way because of economics. Uh, that's a very real thing too. But mostly in Metro Honolulu the ones that you'll see are the ones that are unfortunately victims of alcohol abuse and drug abuse and um, mental instability and it is sad it can feel scary at times there are certain streets where there are bigger homeless populations but they're definitely not everywhere I mean if you're looking for them you might see them but certain neighborhoods there's a higher concentration most neighborhoods there's not any at all Hawaii must be so dog friendly no, it's not. Refer to our blog at dwellhawaii.com for all the things you need to know about moving here with a pet, which includes quarantining or at least doing a bunch of stuff to get your dog over here safely. Also, this park here, Ala Moana Beach Park, there's a huge electronic sign at the opening that says no dogs allowed, but you see dogs all the time. I bring my dogs here. I've had people come up to me and say, you know dogs aren't allowed, right? And I'm like, oh, okay. And I just keep going on my merry way. I want to say it's getting better in Hawaii as far as being a little bit more dog friendly and taking them to restaurants and things but for the most part like dogs are animals they're not family members I feel that's the consensus um, and I'm a dog lover my dogs are my family um, it's nothing like California just put it that way California is so incredibly dog friendly and Hawaii isn't another misconception is that weed is legal unlike California it is not legal you would think it is because you smell it everywhere and it grows pretty easily here and it's kind of like like a you know an old Hawaii thing it used to be on t-shirts and stuff it's no it's a current Hawaii thing still too but it's not legal also if you're counting on winning a bunch of money from a lottery forget about it we don't have lotteries here and we don't have gambling that's probably another reason why Hawaii people love to go to Vegas so much uh, another misconception the government is corrupt some people watching this right now are like, Mila, that's not a misconception. So our relationship with government is an interesting one. It's uh, definitely strained. There's a lot of mistrust, especially because of our complicated past with statehood. And again, that's a hot button that you want to watch out for if you're ever engaging in a conversation with locals. It's probably one that you just really want to stay away from. And I'm kind of like treading the water right now, even mentioning it on this video. But but our government, yeah, you know, we don't, we don't really trust it, but we're also somewhat in a bubble out here. It's not something that we talk about all the time or really even lose much sleep over. For the most part here in Hawaii, we're all just trying to get by. Hawaii doesn't have seasons. Actually, it does have seasons. For the most part, it's wet and it's dry. And right now we're in a very dry season. Like if you look at Diamond Head, it is as brown as the brown crayon in the Crayola box. And then everything's pretty arid all around. In Hawaii Kai right now, we've been driving clients around and they're like, oh my gosh, it's so dry. We do have a hurricane season and the hurricane season goes from about August through November. And we just experienced um, a hurricane that came through that wasn't your typical rainy hurricane but it brought a lot of wind and that was the reason for the Lahaina fire which was very devastating. Um, you know when people ask me why did you move back here from the mainland or what keeps you here I do think of the Lahaina fire I think of how the community came together and really before even any government agencies got involved in Lahaina the community was all with each other and had each other's backs in a very big way. Um, it's that kind of stuff that keeps me here. It's that kind of stuff that brought me here. This feeling of family, um, ohana, just really looking out for one another. Of course it's beautiful, of course the weather is amazing, but there's a culture here and it's a culture that you won't get anywhere else and really that's what keeps me here and we want people who are looking at either moving here or moving back 
to have a really good sense of what that culture is all about. I realize that a video may not 100% give you the education that you need. The experience is really what's going to determine your success here, your liking for it or not. Um, we are open to having conversations with you. Nothing is off the table. So if you'd like to talk a little bit more about the things mentioned in this video, get in touch with us at info at dwellhawaii.com. Also leave us a comment and engage with us right here. Share it with people that you know and let us know if there are other topics you'd like us to cover. Cola and I would love to talk to you or help you out in any way that we can.